you're a new writer, a smaller writer, or just have a small budget, well, this review is for you. This is the Hover One Journey 2.0, the new upgraded version of one of their best-selling scooters. When you think of Hover One, you probably think of hoverboards. They were the hottest holiday gift of 2015. Or maybe you've seen this scooter. They got 15 million views on YouTube also from Hover One. But what you didn't know and what we didn't know either is that Hover One is the world's second largest manufacturer of electric rideables behind Segway 9Bot. We've had a little peek behind the scenes and these guys are about to shake things up for both the scooter and the e-bike market. And you're gonna see it first right here on this channel. Get subscribed so you don't miss it. So this scooter, the Hover One Journey 2.0, comes in four colors and is one of their lightest and least expensive electric scooters for adults with an MSRP of $350. Unlike the dual motor Journey Max that I reviewed a few weeks ago, this one is a single motor scooter focused on being easy to ride for teens, new riders, and smaller adults. In this video, we'll fully test and review the Journey 2.0 tell you how far and how fast it really goes, plus what it's like to ride. And we'll also give you an update on the dual motor Journey Max and compare the two scooters. Let's go for a ride on the Journey 2.0. One of the main things that makes a scooter great for smaller riders is the handlebar height is 35.5 inches above the deck. And you know, of the 150 scooters that we've measured, that's the lowest. And so this is gonna be really comfortable for riders from about four foot 10 to about my height, which is about five foot 10. It's also really light. It weighs 31.6 pounds. And part of the reason for that is that it's a single motor scooter. And then being a single motor scooter also means that the throttle's pretty chill. Like you can see here's full throttle, no throttle. It's, you know, pretty relaxed. Anybody's gonna be able to handle this throttle. And that's in sport mode. Sport mode goes up to uh, 16 miles an hour. Uh, we'll demo that here for a second. There we go. So limiting out there at 16, even downhill. And then I'll double click it. And now we're dropped into eco mode and that's gonna limit us down to nine miles per hour. Oh, so a double click switches modes, there's just two of them. And then a single click uh, turns the headlight on or off. Uh, and then that's about it for the controls. I think you can toggle kilometers and miles, but you know, you're know you just gonna leave it in one of those or the other and not really change it. Um, this bracket over here, uh, it's kind of mysterious looking, but that just latches the stem down to the deck and we'll show you that later. So the other feature that's new for the Journey 2.0 is this big stem right here. The stem is bigger and um, also the frame is made out of steel on this. So despite its low weight of 31.6 pounds, it's got a very solid feeling frame and stem. There's just like no wobble in the stem and it's just super solid feeling. The other thing I like about this scooter are the air-filled tires. They're eight and a half inch air-filled tires that use tubes and they feel really good. They've got great traction. Uh, the handling is really, really good. Um, and of course, you know, there's no suspension at $350. You're just not gonna get that. But this is the next best thing are just air-filled tires. And um, you know, these are exceptionally good ones. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about it? It's got a bell. It's nice and polite for trails like this. It's perfect actually for interacting with bikes and, and pedestrians. And then also, so then the brakes are pretty strong. It has regen up front and uh, discs in the back, which I'll tell you all about in the performance section. And um, you know, they really bring it to a stop uh, pretty quickly. So uh, it's nice, but there's just one lever. So it's all in one. So something I forgot to cover earlier is Hover One is based here in the US. Uh, their headquarters is out in New Jersey and their support is based in the US as well. I think it's down in Arkansas. It comes with a pump all the tools you need to set it up and keep it in tune, a spare set of bolts, and it even comes with my favorite style of valve stem adapter to make it easy to fill the tires. All right, so let's check out the relative size of the Journey 2.0 versus the Journey Max. So this is the 2.0 here, the single motor version, and then this is the big dual motor Max. And you can just see how much bigger and also how much taller the Max is. The Max weighs in at 45.2 pounds, while the Journey 2.0 is just 31.6. And I got an update on the Hover One Journey Max. A few weeks ago, I reviewed this scooter and gave Hover One a list of things that I liked and a few things that I'd like to see improve. And then just a couple days ago, they sent us this. It's the latest revision of the Hover One Journey Max, and it's got all of the updates that I asked for. And this is one of the reasons why I think Hover One is one of the companies we should be watching, because they're evolving at an astonishing rate. And I'm really excited to see what they send us next. And now let's look at the size of the Journey 2.0 compared to another super popular but no longer available scooter, the Xiaomi M365. So these are really similar in shape and size, except for the Xiaomi has handlebars that are much taller, but also narrower. 
Okay, let's check out the tested performance of the single motor Hover 1 2.0. Tested top speed was 15.7 miles per hour, which is 0.2 miles per hour faster than specification. The tested range was 9.9 .9 miles on our hill covered range test course, riding in sport mode as fast as I could go. But according to Hover 1, the maximum range in eco mode on flat ground is as much as 16 miles. The 0 to 15 time was exceptional for a scooter of this price point, reaching 15 miles per hour in just 7.9 seconds, but the throttle is still super easy for new riders to control. It had no trouble at all climbing most of the types of hills you're likely to encounter, which are usually 4 to 6% grade, and it successfully climbed our 10% grade test hill, though that felt like about the limit for a 165 pound rider like myself. If you need to do extreme hill climbing on a budget or are at the higher end of the Journey 2.0's weight limit of 264 pounds, check out our review of the Journey Max, which is linked at the end of this video. Braking distance is also exceptional for the price, thanks to a disc brake at the rear and regenerative braking at the front wheel. The brakes are just in one spot. You've just got a single lever that controls the front regen brake to help charge the battery as you slow down, and the rear disc brake. And uh, I'll just grab that here and it works pretty well. It's got a nice it's a little high-end touch for a uh, less expensive scooter, and that's this rubber insert right here. It has really nice grip to it and feels really good. Being a smaller scooter, portability is very good. It folds down quickly, and then this part right here latches down to the fender, and then to release it, you just pull right here. The weight, as you just saw earlier, is 31.6 pounds, which turns out to be even lighter than the 36 pound spec. It's also fairly compact. Scooters like the Nybot Max G2 don't really fit in my trunk very well without folding the seats down. But here's a picture of two Journey 2.0s in the back of my car, and I might even be able to fit in a third. So this is handy if you wanna take a few of them out for a family ride. The Journey 2.0 has some real safety advantages, especially for younger riders. Better visibility than most scooters if you pick a yellow, white, or pink one. Brakes that are stronger than the other ones in its class and won't put you over the handlebars no matter how hard you grab them. And a top speed that's limited to about the same speed you'd ride on a bicycle. So what other scooters should you look at in this price range? Even just a year ago, I would have said just skip the whole category and spend more. But suddenly we've got some great name brands available for less than $400. The GoTrax G3 Plus is fast and very stable, but not as portable and costs a little more. Segway's popular E2 Plus has the advantage of flat-proof semi-solid tires, but the flip side is the ride isn't as smooth, plus braking and cornering aren't quite as good. News KQI1 Pro has outstanding build quality, almost identical performance to the Journey, but weighs 10% more and isn't quite as strong uphill. And all of the scooters I've just listed have rider weight limits of 200 to 220 pounds, except for the Journey 2.0, which can carry riders up to 264 pounds. So there you go. If you're on the shorter side, new to riding, and are looking for an affordable scooter, the $350 Journey 2.0 is a fun, portable ride that's worth checking out. But if you want something with more punch and more top speed that'll climb extremely steep hills, it's big brother, the Journey Max, climbs better than anything we've seen for $600. And we'll link to that review in about 10 seconds at the very end of this video. But for the latest prices and specs on both scooters, just use the links in this video's description and we'll pin them in the first comment below too. I'm Paul from Rider Guide. Until next time, like, subscribe, and have a great ride.